Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper and this is the home of That's Just Prime, the comprehensive Optimus Prime review series. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine videos, unboxings, blogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hey guys, Bert Stormtrooper here with another Transformers review and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to ask you a question real quick. Have you ever purchased a figure and your first impression of it was disappointing to say the least? So after fiddling with it, getting your first impressions, you decide to just cut your losses, put it on the shelf, kind of forget about it and not mess with it. But then a while later, you go back to that figure for whatever reason, you take it off the shelf and you mess around with it again. And this time you find, hey, this figure's not as bad as I thought originally with my first impressions. That was the case for me with this guy right here. This is a generation one Headmaster Weird Wolf. Now, this is another one of those high quality KOs that I've I, quite frankly had very good luck with uh, up to this point. Um, I've been very happy with most of or all of my uh, high quality KO purchases. Every once in a while though, the thing to keep in mind is that you are purchasing a KO. So it is going to be a gamble. At the end of the day, at some point, something might go wrong and you're going to have to cut your losses. The reflector that I've got has some QC or some molding issues with its weapon. So I cannot put together the weapons to make the super weapon for the robots. Uh, something that I found out later. Um, this figure right here has some issues and they're, and they're not necessarily quality issues. It's actually, a well, there is one quality issue that I'm gonna get into, uh, but there are other issues with it that are, are more of a molding thing with these. They made some significant differences between this figure and the original G1. So when I first messed with it, those differences plus the fact that I just gotten off the mind wipe figure. I, I had just purchased Mindwipe. I had just reviewed Mindwipe and that figure was amazing. So I was coming off of Mindwipe to come into Weird with which quite frankly is not as great as a figure as Mindwipe was. So that along with the differences or the issues or the remolds or whatever they did to this, at first I was like, ah, this is not such a great figure. And I, you know, I wanted to review this right away when I got it. I felt disappointed with it. I put it on the shelf. I didn't mess with it. Recently, I picked it up. I started filming with it. I'm like, you know what? It's kind of a fun figure. Let's let's put it in front of the camera. So with that being said, let's get into the review of Generation 1 KO Weird Wolf. Hello and welcome back, I guess. <laughs> and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generation 1 Headmaster Weird Wolf and Monso. And again, this is a high quality KO. Uh, the original figure was released in 1987, retailed for approximately $10. I got this guy online, brand new, in the box for approximately $40, which is really quite a good deal for a high quality KO, brand new in the box, all complete, all that good stuff. So here we have Weird Wolf in his aptly named Weird Wolf mode. It's like some, some sort of a weird robot wolf here. Uh, it's a crazy design. Uh, I do love these crazy designs here. Uh, doesn't really do a whole lot. There's like no attack features or anything like that, but he does have some pretty cool detailing. I mean, he's obviously a robotic wolf, so he's not like Beast Wars trying to look um, like he's organic. It, it's very obviously I'm a robot and I'm not even going to try to hide it. Uh, which is kind of cool because you can imagine a giant robot wolf um, <laughs> rampaging down the street would be pretty scary. And I think that's what they were going for. Uh, rub symbol here, even though it is a KO, he does have rub symbols and they do work. I don't know if they're coming up on camera, but uh, it does work. Let me see if I can get that a little closer. Rub on that a little more. And yeah, there they go. So you can see the rub symbols do actually work. Um, so one of the uh, things to keep in mind or, or, or to be watchful for, if you're ever shopping for a G1 Weird Wolf and you're wondering, you find one in the box, you're wondering, did I get a KO or not? Uh, this is something to look for because he'll be packaged in, in the box. He'll be packaged in wolf mode and you'll be looking at this side right here. So the rub symbol was put there from the factory. So if you look at him in the box and he does not have the rub symbol, it, you're looking at a KO. The, the rub symbol actually comes on its own little separate sticker sheet. It, it came with its original sticker sheet, 
And then it also came with an additional sticker sheet that had the stickers that were applied from the factory on the original figure. You have to apply those to this. So when you look at this guy in the box, you won't see the rub symbol. And I believe the uh, the Decepticon symbol uh, should also be on there on the original and the KO didn't have that one on there So if you look in the box and you see these two stickers are not there uh, It's either the this one for sure this one. I'm kind of 50 50 on uh, And I'm thinking maybe this one of these two is one of the one of these One of these stickers we're looking at four stickers here So we know this one for sure one of these three was put in there from the factory uh, as, as well as this one. So when you look at him in the box, if he doesn't have any stickers on him, you're looking at a KO. So that's something to look for. Uh, look for when you're when you're out shopping. So uh, enough about that. Weird Wolf here is approximately eight and a half inches long, from uh, snoot to tip of the tail. He's about four and a half inches tall. So pretty tall for a uh, alt mode here. Not a whole lot for articulation. The legs can go back and forth here. He does have a little bit of bend there. Uh, the tail can actually move up and down then the shoulders here can move and these uh, I guess elbow pieces here can also move so you can kind of give them a bit of a I don't know <laughs> begging pose give me a treat give me a treat give me a treat so <laughs> I guess there's that I guess there's more articulation than than, than I thought because uh, I said not a whole lot of articulation and I'm showing off quite a few points of articulation additionally the head as you saw does have a little bit of up and down here at the neck and the jaws can also open and close now if uh, uh if you're paying attention you may have already seen one of the first quality issues or really the only quality issue that i had with this figure and that is the ratchets on the shoulders you'll notice that mine doesn't have any so the original piece that is the ratchet for these it's, it does kind of like this loop like it's one solid piece that goes all the way around the ones that were used for these pieces were almost like a c piece so they were they didn't go all the way around they had an open end okay so what happened is the minute i opened this figure when i ratcheted his arms up they actually ratcheted up but when they ratchet down the actual gears would catch on this and what they ended up doing is pulling it all the way back like that and snapping it that happened the first time I moved these arms, um, both sides, they, they both did it immediately the first time I tried to check out his articulation, so right out of the box. Uh, one of the things that really kind of disappointed me about this figure. So um, the ratchet piece easily replaced, if I were to find like a junker figure, I can maybe take those ratchet pieces out. Honestly, now that I've come back to it, it's really not that big of a deal because as you can see, it's not like the arms are loose. They're actually... They hold quite tightly. They move just fine. It has not affected the functionality of the figure in any way, shape, or form. The only difference is that I am missing that very satisfying ratcheting sound. So again, if you're if you're shopping for one of these loose and he's not ratcheting, you may want to question whether it's a KO or, or an original uh, because the on the original, those ratchet pieces were one solid piece. They shouldn't be breaking like that. So there's that. Uh, we're going to go up here to the top. Oh, he did come with a weapon. Uh, I guess I'll show that off. That's that's his hand weapon. And there's nowhere to put it in, in, in wolf mode. So that's that's kind of why, why I had it off to the side. There's really nothing to do with it here. So <laughs> we'll set it aside until we're in robot mode and we're ready for that. Let's open up the cockpit right here at the top. And right inside, we're going to find Monzo. So we're going to pull him out and drop him. <laughs> and here is his headmaster partner, Monzo, he's approximately two inches tall. We'll get him focused in. And a cool little figure right here, going all the way around so you can see what he looks like. Articulation, of course, the arms can move uh, up and down. And you always want to be careful with these because these are all square pieces. So when you are moving these, you are going to be putting a force on those little tiny pegs that hold the arms together. So it's usually probably best to not even move the arms on these, uh, on these um, headmasters. He can move at the uh, hips and he can bend at the knee so he can have a little sitting position as well That's about it. Now here is I don't know if I want to call this a Quality issue as so much as it is really kind of a molding issue So if you'll notice The tabs on the back of the figure right here These are the tabs that are going to rotate those drums on weird wolf's uh, chest to show us his stats, his strength, his speed, his intelligence, and all of that. On the original figure, uh, I believe it's this tab here. Yeah, this tab here should be up higher. So these guys should give us just at about a five 
and this guy should give us almost a full bar when we get him in there. You'll notice that these are all the same height. So when we put this guy in the Weird Wolf, all of his stats are going to be just a straight line across the board. And they don't go all the way up to five either. They're just under like somewhere between four and a five. So if you have a KO Headmaster, you're not going to get the actual stats that you're supposed to get for Weird Wolf. And then uh, also, he doesn't like to stay put. He actually he has a tendency to eject and literally launch himself off of the neck <laughs> for Weird Wolf here. We'll see that in a moment. Uh, let's get let's get set this guy off to the side. Get in the transformation. We're going to start right here with the tail. And just very carefully twist on that. Pull that off. This is going to become a sword melee weapon form. We're going to take this uh, whole back piece here. This is going to rotate up. We're going to take the wolf's head and rotate this up as well. Kibble City. This guy is very, very kibbly. Take him right here at the hips. Straighten him out. Take the wolf feet and bend these back. We're going to take the front paws and we're going to uh, rotate them at this hinge right here. Rotate them back. I like to give them one or two clicks right there at the elbow bring these down as well so let's do that on both sides bring the arms down he does have these missile uh pods right here so on this little tab you can pull these up and that's going to reveal some missile pods right there you can do this for uh wolf mode as well but i like to leave them smooth in wolf mode and just kind of open them in robot mode i may be doing that backwards i'm not sure so there's weird wolf in robot mode and we'll open up his chest so we can see his stats and now we're going to bring in Monzo and transform him into his headmaster mode. So we're going to bend him over, take the loader panel in the back, and uh, rotate that up. There is something that I did to this that I'm going to show you in a moment. And then we'll go ahead and uh, put him in, and hopefully he won't launch. Let's find out. <laughs> he stayed. That might be the first time that I've tried to do something on camera that actually went well. <laughs> usually he'll launch off and it takes me three or four attempts to actually get him to stay there uh so you'll notice right away let me get him in close and and uh, focus there so you'll notice right away that all his stats are pretty much a straight line actually they're kind of slanting down the further to the right that you get uh, but they're just under five his uh speed and strength should be right at five and then his intelligence should be almost all the way up to ten is what it should be. So that is a clear indicator that you got yourself a KO. At least the headmaster part is going to be a KO if you're not getting the correct stats there. Okay. So there is um, a Weird Wolf in robot mode once again. In a robot mode, he is approximately six inches tall. And, you know, from the front, he looks fine. He looks pretty okay. When you go off to the side or you look in the back and he has a lot of junk. He's got arm kibble. He's got foot kibble. He's got butt kibble uh, he's got back kibble he's got kibble city kibble city kibble city where are you gonna go we're gonna go to kibble city so <laughs> there it is <laughs> okay at least you guys got to see it uh you know i'm not lying <laughs> we'll put that guy right see now he doesn't want to stay so there is weird wolf in robot mode articulation not a whole lot here we got the arms can go all the way around and of course those should be ratcheting uh once again uh, we got the elbows right here, so we can bend these. The uh, legs can go forward uh, about that far, and then down only to be straight. And nothing at the knee. He can forward bend the knee, but that would be painful. And, of course, we can bring in his sword. Give him a sword for a melee weapon. This is kind of like the way I like to display him. It's like this, and then I like to give him his little laser pistol here. Give him one more bend at the elbow, and then bring that up like that. And this is kind of the way I like to display him. Now, uh, you're probably, I should address. Uh, so on his head, let's come in close so we can look at the head. Very cool sculpt for the head. But they, once again, they did that thing where they don't put any detail in the eye. So he just has like these crazy blank eyes. And then the pins where they did the actual injection molding sit right in the center of where the eye holes are or where the eye lenses are. So it looks like he's got these really huge dilated pupils. It kind of looks like he's high or crazy or just, it's 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 just out there. So I did what I, what I did with Mind White. I took some uh, leftover stickers from some sticker sheets and I just cut out my own little 
uh, eye stickers right there to just to kind of give him a little bit of detail since he did have red eyes in the cartoon and in the comics so i just kind of went with that i actually thought about painting them because what the heck it's a ko so why not paint it uh but i decided to try the stickers out first and i'm happy with the way that turned out so i just went with that so yeah uh like i said at first impressions because of the qc issues the 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 ejection thing not so much that tends to happen over time either whether it's a ko or, or or a regular one that's that starts happening with time my power master prime loves ejecting his power master it's it's just insane but the the whole thing with the stats just being off the way they are and and the drums are not really lined up that threw me off about the figure and then the ratchets just kind of breaking the first time I want to move the figure. That just really disappointed me about this guy. So, yeah, like I said, when I first got him, first impressions, not great. Um, and I thought to myself, well, you know, that's that's what I get when I get a KO. It's going to be a gamble. So I put him up on the shelf and uh, didn't look at him for months. Started playing with him again last week, and I thought, you know what? That's that's not as bad as I thought it was at first. It's 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 an okay figure. Um, but just know, if you guys are out there hunting, you may want to save your pennies. Maybe go for the G1 version but instead, um, instead of the KO. Not as good as the original G1, which is not typically uh, my outcome with these guys. So, there it is. I think that about does it for Transformers Generation 1, KO, Headmaster, Weird Wolf, and Monzo. Real quick, guys. We are about to lose all of our community options, so comments are going away, sharing, all of that stuff is going to go away. So if you want to help the channel out, help me out by spreading the word. Tell people about the channel, share the links with them, send them over this way to watch the videos. Also, I have a donate button up at my top banner. If you want to click on that and help the channel out, I would greatly appreciate it. What did you think of this figure? Let me know by leaving me a comment down below. Give me some thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends if you like what you see. And I'll talk to you next time.